Ark awakens in front of a tree and is left concerned by his situation. After calming himself down, he assesses himself and his equipment and realizes that he's inside of the body of his game character Ark. Recalling that he fell asleep after playing the game, Ark tries out his wyvern slash move and is left astonished by the power behind it. Trying out magic next, Ark casts a simple fire spell that incinerates a tree. Ark then concludes that he's able to utilize all of the previous skills from the upgrade path of his main skill, Holy Knight, which led him to believe he's super strong. Growing hungry and sadly without food or funding, Ark casts a gate spell to teleport him somewhere, but is instead teleported off a cliff he stood close by. Landing safely by a river stream, Ark takes off his helmet to drink from it but realizes that his head is that of a skeleton. Remembering that he chose the skeleton avatar back in his old world, Ark fathoms that if he entered a town without wearing his helmet he'd be treated as a monster. The name of the town is Louvierte, and after exploring the place a bit, Ark encounters a woman arguing with an investigator over his failure to obtain the information she hired him for. As it turns out, the woman was an elf, which amazes Ark, but he soon loses sight of her. Later, he finds the town's mercenary guild and upon entering it, tries to acquire a license. Initially, the male receptionist claims that it'd be pointless for him to get one as he appears to be well-employed already due to the armor he's wearing. So Ark gives an excuse and the receptionist believes it but informs him that before he can get one, he'll have to pass a trial. The trial entails that Ark must bring back proof of subjugation of one of three things, a beast, monster, or bandit. Wasting no time, Ark leaves the guild. Afterward, Ark slays a couple of boars and then an orc. Carrying the proof of subjugation, Ark spots a group of bandits surrounding a carriage who slays the guards and surround a noble lady and her maid. The bandits take advantage of the noble lady and her maid. We see Ark slaying the bandits and finishing off the remaining bandits with his wyvern slash move. Once the bandits were dealt with, Ark checks upon the two ladies. They thank him and introduce themselves as Lauren and her maid Rita. As Rita and Lauren step into the forest to take care of themselves, Ark loots the bandits' belongings and uses their horses to carry it all. Rita then asks for Ark's name and he introduces himself as a humble traveler by the name of Ark. Back at the guild, Ark turns in his subjugated prey and receives a rune stone from the orc that he slew and is advised by the receptionist to remove them whenever you kill a monster. After a brief explanation of what runes can be processed into, Ark is given his license and he immediately checks into an inn and has the food served there delivered to his room. A single mother named Siona works hard for her two children, Marka and Helena. She heads to the field every morning as the sun rises. Wanting to help their mother, Marka writes a job request asking for help. Eventually, Ark accepts the job which entails protecting someone as they collect herbs. He arrives at the job destination called Rada Village and the village's gatekeeper directs him to Sona's home. In the fields while collecting herbs, some shaking in the bushes alerts Ark and upon investigating it he finds a wounded green multi-tailed monster. Ark then uses healing magic on it to allow it to heal from its wound. Ark names it Ponta. Back in the village, a hunter is distraught by something he saw in the forest that wasn't the usual fanged boar that would be normally encountered in the forest. As it so happens, Siona arrives back in the village and hears from the gatekeeper that Marka left for the forest earlier that morning with a knight. Returning to Ark's group, they find the Kabumi tree in full bloom, and the moment Marka approaches the tree, a giant basilisk appears from behind it. Noticing Ponta's upset behavior toward the beast, Ark deduces that the one responsible for injuring her was the monster. Before the basilisk could stomp on Marka, Ark briskly pulls her out of the way and then avoids its poison fog breath attacks. Analyzing the basilisk's attacks while defending against its paralyzing claws and whip-like tongue, Ark then uses his holy shield of two dates to defend against a petrification attack. After this, Ark uses his judgment attack that slices the monster in half thereby defeating it. Ark requests that it be kept a secret and Marka understands. Ark then notices a ring around the monster's right ankle that disappears moments after it was spotted. Marka then reunites with her mother Siona who embraces her daughter and Ark formally apologizes to Siona for recklessly allowing her daughter to go into the forest. By dusk, Ark and Ponta get ready to leave and Ark is given a circlet of flowers by Helena. Later that night within the forest, a large group of soldiers slay a giant basilisk of their own. The leader is given a status report of the total number of deceased and injured soldiers by his subordinate and about how a single person managed to slay a giant basilisk single-handedly. Amazed by this feat, the leader surmises that the one who slew it must be either a god or devil. Meanwhile, Ark enjoys himself in his room with Ponta and considers taking on a more challenging quest the next day. Elsewhere, Arian's inner monologue notes how the elf and human treaty is nothing more than a farce at that point in time, and that she seeks more power. It was the encounter with a large man in silver armor that would change her destiny as she spots Ark with Ponta exiting a cave and prepares to attack Ark. Elsewhere, in Diento, 
Triton hears from his partner Celsica about the failed assassination attempt on Lauren's life. As for the beasts that were set loose in Luvirt, they were in the giant basilisks which were both individually slain. The news disheartens Triton, and Celsica asks why Prince Dakers was targeting the area in the first place. Triton, on the other hand, has no clue. It's also noted that they cannot allow any information to leak that they're in allegiance with Dakers, or else that would complicate matters with Prince Stekt. Henceforth, Triton orders that the product must be secured and sent to the market, and that Princess Uryarna not become aware of this. Celsica assures that it will be done. Triton then asks about his son Udalan and Celsica details, and he was escorting the product, which Triton scornfully disapproves of. Back to Ark, he's attacked by Aryan and recognizes her as the elf from the city. Aryan accuses Ark of being a bandit, but stops attacking him after she sees Ponta and recognizes her as a spirit creature. This clears the suspicion of Ark being a bandit, and Aryan discloses that she heard that bandits that were located there were hunting elves. Ark informs Aryan that no elves were found in there and then learns from her that elves are sold for a high price on the slave market. Before Aryan runs off, Ark tries to offer his help, but Aryan flatly rejects the offer and runs off, warping into a place that he had suspected was close to the elven forest. Ponta then senses some presence nearby. It turns out it was a young elven girl trying to escape from her captors, but is soon caught. The aforementioned Udolin was the leader of the bandit captors who not only taunts the girl for trying to escape, but also stabs her in the leg as well. Ark watches it all as it unfolds, and before he can make a move, Aryan appears and takes out a couple of bandits with a single swipe. One of the bandits recognizes Aryan as a dark elf, a rare type of elf, and would fetch a great price, which Udolin claims that he doesn't care for her and that bandits are to do whatever they please with her. A large number of bandits then surround Aryan, but she instantly defeats them and one of the remaining bandits recognizes Aryan as an elven warrior. Once Aryan takes out nearly all of the remaining bandits, Aryan is caught in a pinch when Udolin takes one of the elven girl's hostages. Seeing an opportunity to help, Ark appears behind Udolin and uses his armor lariat attack against him which KOs him. The remaining bandits are then dealt with by Aryan, the elven captives were rescued and Aryan notices that the captives wore mana-eating collars. Aryan explains that it suppresses their ability to use their spirit magic. Ark casts Uncurse on one of the elven girls and then heal the wounds on the girl. Aryan summons her spirit creature a whispering foal to relay a message about the rescued elves. Eventually, a couple of cloaked elves arrive at the scene and pick up the formerly captive elven girls. With the elven girls out of the picture, Aryan recounts the skills and abilities that Ark displayed and demands to know who he really is, but Ark assures that he is no one of any importance. Just the Whispering Fall returns and relays a message from someone claiming that the main perpetrator's HQ was located in Diento, and that they're going to make a move on there soon. In light of this, Aryan asks to hire Ark for his services. Ark accepts Aryan's offer. Using the magic spell Gate, Ark teleports the group to Lytle River, which surprises Aryan as she notices Diento in the distance. When they arrive in the city, they wait for Danka. Danka discloses the location of their target area within the theater district. That night, the group heads out to their destination, while being tailed by an unknown person. Using Dimension Move, Ark teleports the group to the rooftop of their destination. After Aryan struggles to get inside the building, Ark uses Dimension Move again to teleport Danka, Ponta, and himself into the building. Searching around the inside of the building, they find that some of the bandits were killed. From there, they all split up to investigate the building so they can cover more ground. Ark uses Dimension Move to cover the sound of his tracks as he moves around the building and the moment he finds more dead bandits in a room, he's attacked by a ninja. Exuberant over this discovery, the ninja asks Ark how he knows that she's a ninja but calms down after seeing Ponta. The ninja deduces that Ark is there for the enslaved elves and then gives him a roll of paper which she claims will be of use to him. The location of the elves. The papers which the ninja gave to Ark turn out to be paper contracts for elven slaves and Ark shows this to both Aryan and Danka while also mentioning there are two more elves in the Lord's Palace. When asked about where he found the papers, Ark claims that he found them on one of the bandits there. Down in the basement area, the elven girls are freed by Ark. Ark then uses Dimension Move to reach the Lord's Palace. Having two elven ladies by the names of Sina and Una restrained on his bed, Triton prepared to have his way with them, but first chastises his son, Udalan, for his recent failure. Elsewhere, Ark and Aryan manage to successfully land on Triton's mansion and catch the attention of a couple of guards. At that moment, Celsica informs Triton about the intruders in the mansion, and when he claims that the invaders are monsters, the door behind him explodes. Aryan then incapacitates Triton, while Ark scares the daylights out of Udolin and in the process finds a hidden room. The two elves then leave and Aryan goes to check up on Ark who loots the gold from the hidden room. 
Several bombs are detonated across the mansion and because of this, Ark and Aryan teleport to a safe location. She offers Ark to accompany her to the elven lands where more elves are being held captive. Ark claims he can never take off his armor and Aryan asks why. Hence, Ark takes off his helmet and shows Aryan his true visage and a brief explanation of his past, claiming that he's suffering from a curse that has his appearance transformed. Deducing that he's not of the undead and placing her trust in him for helping her out so far, Aryan claims he'll be welcomed in the land of elves. Furthermore, the elder may be able to help him change back into his original form. To that, the two formally introduce themselves and shake on their newly formed relationship. In Olav, the capital of the Roden Kingdom, King Carlin holds a meeting with his children, Princess Sect and Doc Hares, and Princess Yuriarna about the recent events surrounding Triton. Sect mentions that Triton was illegally selling elves to the eastern country, which Doc Hares refutes, but Sex claims that Doc Hares is standing up for him. The comment upsets Doc Hares, who speaks defensively, but is stopped by King Carlin and speaks in favor of Doc Hares while claiming a full investigation must be had before any conclusion would be drawn. King Carlin then asks for Yuriara's opinion on the matter, and she claims that she heard the rumors being spread about the elven slaves causing the imposed treaty to be broken. That would cause raised tensions with their kingdom and other nations, hence they need to find the truth immediately. She also mentions the backlash from the elves themselves and Sect mentions that the other nations would hold them responsible. Therefore, King Carlin assigns Yuriarn to visit Limbol and discuss any tensions that have arisen there. Sometime later in Olav, Yuriarna is served tea by her maid Ferna. As she goes to drink it, she mentions her suspicions that her brother Doc Harris is involved in the elf trade incident and that Sect will go after him about it. Meanwhile, Ark and Aryan arrive at their destination of Lalatoya. The gate to the village opens and Ark follows Aryan to the Elder's house. At the Elder's home, Ark and Aryan are met by the Elder and his wife Dylan and Glennies, both of whom are Aryan's parents. Dillian formally thanks Ark for all of his achievements towards the Elven village, but he does rebuke Aryan for attacking Triton's manor. Understanding the problem at hand, Dillian says that he'll inform the other Elders in Maple to alert them of the trafficking contract that was uncovered. The following morning, Ark wakes up and learns that Aryan and Dillian have already left from Glennies. Aryan and Dylan listen to the elders' debate on how to proceed with the humans violating the 400-year treaty about enslaving elves. The result of the discussion is settled by Elder, who suggests they observe the Roden Kingdom's reaction to the attack on the Lord's Manor. Returning to Ark, he spars against Glennis, who quickly overwhelms him with her sword play during their sparring match together. Dylan briefs Ark on the current situation decided by the elders. He also hires Ark to hunt down the names on the contract while also freeing any elves he encounters. Admitting that the pay he received for the job would be inadequate, Dylan bargains with Ark and offers him information on how to break his curse to make up for his reward. Dylan then informs Ark of a magical spring near Lord Crown that can remove curses. However, it's also a place where the Dragon Lord makes its home, and the spirit animals also inhabit the area. Because of the risks it imposes on a human, an elf would have to act as a mediator to be granted access there. Ark accepts this reward, but internally notes how his curse was an RP thing. However, if his condition was a curse, he'd be able to dispel it with one of his spells. However, spells such as those hurt the undead and could harm him. Ark casts Uncurse on himself to test this theory, and to his amazement, it works without inflicting any harm. Ark and Groove set out for Olav, the capital of the Roden Kingdom, and Ark reflects on how the skeleton body is in fact due to a curse. Although he can cast an uncursed spell on himself to cure his condition, the effects are sadly temporary. The following day, Yuriarna, accompanied by her maids, settle in their horse-driven carriage. It's planned to regroup with their guards midway in the nearby forest to keep up a fast pace and reach the Grand Duchy of Linbolt with all possible haste. Unbeknownst to them, they were being closely watched from the shadows by an elusive figure. Back to Ark's group, they close in on where the haunted wolves are sent to be. They're attacked by haunted wolves, which most are illusions cast by the wolves. They both handle themselves against the haunted wolves and soon Ark locates the leader of the pack. Confronting the pack leader, Ark sees that it has a similar ring attached to its leg that he once found on a giant basilisk. Ark manages to cut the ring off of the pack leader which allows it to regain control of itself and call its pack members to regroup with it and leave. Aryan regroups with Ark and learns from him about the rings he found on the haunted wolf and giant basilisk that attacked them in the past. Meanwhile, Yuriarna's carriage progresses to the forest. She is fully aware that her brother Doc Harris is the ringleader responsible for the elven slaves and that her other brother's sect would allow things to play out without getting involved. Just then the carriage starts to shake and a couple of the guards outside shout that they're under attack. Returning to Ark's group, Orion prepares to skin the tail fur from the wolves and Ponta hears a disturbance in the distance and heads for it. 
Ark follows him and Aryan stays behind to prepare the wolf's tail fur. At Yuriarna's carriage, both Yuriarna and Ferna are slain by one of six hooded assailants and one of Yuriarna's guards was an accomplice. Just then, Ponta followed by Ark arrive at the scene. As Ark examines Yuriarna and Ferna, the assailants launch multiple fire Beretta and Rock shot at Ark, who is invulnerable to the attacks. Assessing whether or not he should cast a spell to revive both Ferna and Yuriarna, Ark is shocked to see that the haunted wolves from before attack the assailants. Ark joins the attack and they manage to take out a few of them, while the rest escape from the scene. Once that was all settled, the wolves take their leave and Ark decides to cast regeneration on Yuriarna Ferna and as many of her guards as he can. While Ark does this, Yuriarna briefly regains consciousness. Ark regroups with Aryan who had finished her personal task and they continue forward. Finally at Olav, they nearly get involved in a fight between a young lady and three angry men who are easily dealt with by the young lady who turns out to be the ninja girl. Chiyome thanks Aryan and Ark for freeing the enslaved people back in Diento and introduces herself as a member of the Jinshin clan's six ninjas. They then change their location to a room in an inn, and there Ark introduces himself and Panta, while Aryan introduces herself. In the royal castle, Prince Doc Harris throws a fit about the haunted wolves that stop taking orders. Another man there named Centrion speculates that the rings on the wolves may have been broken somehow, and that Yuriana is likely to be alive. This would pose a severe problem to Doc Hare's plans to stop the negotiations between the elves and her. Doc Hare then asks who the perpetrators were and Centrion responds that they were likely elves and would have eventually arrived in Olav. Meanwhile, Ark and the group walk through a forested area and Chiyome informs Ark that the founder of her village wasn't a beastman, but a human named Hanzo. She reveals that Hanzo was once a spy for the Revlon Empire who took it upon himself to take an underprivileged beastman in his care and train some of them too, reaching their destination, the largest slave market in Olav Etzat Market. By dusk, Chiyome goes over the plan and asks that both Aryan and Ark act conspicuously, and then make a quick escape when they're done. Chiyome admits that she doesn't believe that everyone involved in this will be able to escape. Ark then asks if Etzat is a decoy, and Chiyome confirms it by mentioning the other four slave markets in Olav will be targeted. Chiyome goes off to notify her comrades, tells Ark and Aryan that the assault on the market will take place that night, and advises them to prepare themselves. Ark dons a new mask, and they're soon met by Chiyomai and her companion Goemon. It's decided that Aryan and Chiyon will attack the front, while Ark and Goemon will attack the rear. Wasting no time, Ark and Goemon approach the back gate, and Goemon casts Stone Smasher on himself to help Ark break through the front door. Inside the place, Ark takes out several guards and Goemon casts Arm Bracer, which transforms his body into hardened steel that breaks the weapons of those who attacked him. Taking advantage of the situation, Goemon casts Rock Spear Strike and Ark adds to it with his Rock Fang. On the opposite side of the fort, Chiyome and Aryan manage to get past the front gate and head toward the market. During the night of the attack on the Etzet market, Doc Harris in Cetrian's safe haven learns from the said person that the market is under attack, as well as four other slave markets as well. Doc Harris demands that reinforcements be sent to the places under attack, and notes his frustration about his situation. At the Etzet market, Chiyome, Aryan, and Panta infiltrate the place, and a couple of guards soon accost them. The guards are quickly dealt with by Chiyome's ninjutsu liquid wolf fang. They then reach the cells where the slaves are held, and Chiyome announces herself as part of the Jinshin clan who's there to rescue them all. As Chiyome opens some of the cells, more guards arrive and are swiftly dealt with by Aryan. Outside in the market compound, Ark and Goemon arise from the rubble and are soon joined by Chioma's group who informs them of the Beast People's whereabouts. Goemon decides to stay alone and defend the area if reinforcements arrive, leaving Ark and the others to return to the market and free more of the slave held captive. Once they do, Chioma finds a pile of dead bodies and a slave informs them that slaves who were sick or injured were disposed of. Ark pulls Chiyome together, and they all regroup with the slave in the hall and then teleport it out by Ark's magic in large groups. Once that was settled, Ark returned to the market compound to assist the injured and belabored Goemon. With Ark using his rock fang and Goemon using his rock spear strike, they manage to decimate the reinforcements without a hassle. After this, the two reconvene with Orion and Chiyome and bring along the deceased slave's bodies. Once the bodies are properly and respectively laid out on the ground, Orion cremates them. Meanwhile, Doc Harris is assassinated by Cetrian, who is in cahoots with Prince Sect, who learns from Cetrian about the freed slaves and Yuriarna's supposed demise. Pleased by the news, Sect asks Cetrian to spread the news of Yuriarna's death and relishes that he now is the sole heir to the throne. 
Time passes and Ark's group returns to Olav. They ride on a boat steered by Goimon and learn from Chioma that Goimon and her will head to a hidden village in the Calcut Mountains. She then claims that she'll give them the important information she had promised them. In the Grand Duchy of Linbolt, Yuriarna reaches her sister Siriarna's castle, and she learns from her sister about her supposed demise. After contemplating the situation over, Yuriarna tells her sister not to inform her father about her survival, and instead hopes to continue her duty by speaking to the elves. Back to Ark's group, Aryan relays a message through a whisper bird so Danka can be brought up to date with the current events. A flashback of the information given by Chioma, that the location of the remaining elven slaves are at the Holy Revlon Empire. Meanwhile, in the imperial capital of the Holy Revlon Empire, Emperor Domitianus learns of the death of Dokhares from his Chancellor Velmos. Although pleased by the news that Yuriarna is dead, Velmos informs Domitianus that the rings they provided to Dokhares were broken, and that a third person is involved in killing the princess. Domitianus speculates that Sect was the likely one to do it and asks about Fumba's progress in bringing Olav to ruin. Velmos happily announces that his progress is coming along smoothly. In a barren wasteland, a flock of sand wyverns flies in the sky and Ark becomes super excited by their presence. Meanwhile, someone is watching and taking notes on Ark. Aryan discloses the plan on how they'll reach the Revlon Empire. Aryan claims that unlike the Rodan Kingdom Elven, slavery is allowed and her being an elf is notably disconcerting. They're then approached by the person spying on them before. He introduced himself as Carsi Held, an elven monster researcher. Carsi then requests that they help him with his research on monsters, and Aryan Flatty refuses, but Carsi offers them a map of the Revlon Empire as a reward for their services. Carsi informs the two to meet him at the town entrance the next day. Ark then asks for information on the sandworm they're hunting, and Carsi elaborates on it. Aryan then notices that the cart behind them is gone, and then the sandworm in question appears and is considerably bigger than expected. Spotting Carsi's companion by the broken cart, Aryan tries to rescue him, but is ambushed by the sand worm, so she tries to exploit its weakness to fire with a fire spell. However, her attack against it was futile, and the sand worm tries to attack her, but Ark manages to save her in the nick of time, allowing her and Carsi's companion to retreat to a safe location. Taking advantage of the situation, Ark pulls the sand worm out from the ground and using his immense strength, slams it to the ground. Once the sand worm was knocked out, the attached ring disappeared. Later that day, the sand worm is tied up and brought back to the town. There, Carsi gives the two their reward. Meanwhile, an unnamed man from Revlon reports to Fumba as he fondles a couple of women by his side about the recent number of missing people. Fumba then shows the man the monster he has in store for the next attack and feeds one of his women to it. Arriving at the border town of Kasek, Ark figures they finally arrived in the Revlon Empire, the place where the captured elves were being imprisoned in. Because of the tight security in the vicinity, they decide to ask around town while trying not to draw attention themselves. By dusk, Ark reviews what he's learned that noises are coming from the castle, and that people from the town have mysteriously disappeared over time. However, there's still no word about elves being held captive there. Before Ark and Ponta regroup with Aryan, they hear a woman screaming and find a lady in an alleyway being confronted by a trio of men. Ark arrives at the scene and deals with the brutes. That night in his fortress, Fumba learns from the three men who tried to capture the lady in the alleyway of their failure, so he feeds them to his white tiger monster. Outside of the fortress, Ark and the group proceed toward the fortress. Once inside the fortress, Orion locates a hidden stairway, and as they walk down it, the pungent smell of beasts is noted. At the bottom of the stairs, the two guards guarding the solid iron gate are swiftly dealt with. Ponta then finds another iron gate that Ark opens, and behind it, the group finds a massive underground space with pillars all around the area. Fumba then arrives and notes that he came to investigate what was alerting his monsters. Fumba introduces himself by his full name and job title, Monster Sorcerer. He goes on to explain the extent of his skill in his profession, which concerns Ark, and then spots the rings attached to his belt match the ones he's encountered before in his travels. Figuring that Ark doesn't believe him, Fumba summons his white tiger monster to deal with him. Ark places Aryan at a safe distance, and asks Fumba about the elves who arrived there four months ago. Fumba then reveals that while most of them were sent to the Empire for their magical experiments, the remaining ones were used for his amusement. Hearing that, Ark slices off the monster's head with a single swipe and admits that he's encountered a fair amount of villainy since he's arrived in that land. Unfazed by this, Fumba summons a horde of monsters, but Ark briskly deals with them all with his sword and skills like Shield Bash. Still unfazed by this outcome, Fumba points out that Aryan is in a pinch, and Ark then sees that an orc was about to crush her with its club. However, the orc is entrapped in a body of water called Liquid Prison created by Chioma. Although Fumba tries to summon more monsters, he's told by Chioma 
that her comrades have eliminated them all. Just then, the ground starts to tremor and Fumba claims that his masterpiece is Humbrian. He'll settle the score outside and flees the scene. Teleporting outside with Arian in his arms and both Panta and Chioma on his shoulders, Ark recognizes the monster that escapes from the fortress as a Hydra. Ark notices the rings on the Hydra that emerge from the fortress and Chioma suggests a tactical retreat. However, before they can, the Hydra fires straight at them. Fumba watches this through the Hydra and relishes his victory over Ark's group. Fumba sends the Hydra to Kasek to feed upon its inhabitants. Meanwhile, Ark and Shioma are shown to be both alive as Ark's shield magic protected them. Despite Arian wanting to go after Fumba, Ark suggested that he hunt the Hydra heading for Kasek. Figuring Ark could do it alone, Chiyome and Arian go by themselves to hunt Fumba. In the Holy East Revlon Empire, Dalmanos gives Emperor Domitianus an update concerning the Destroyer of Nations, and the rings of submission created from the analysis of Fumba's sorcery are nearly complete. The Hydra was closing in on Kasek, and the city guards raise an alarm as the head guard ordered preparations for an evacuation. Catching up to the Hydra, Ark uses his wevern slash to catch his attention and follows up with a shield bash. An astonished Fumba witnesses this as it plays out, and then Ark dodges its flame breath with a dimension move, but one of the heads bites down on him. Despite the other heads about to fire off fireballs at the entrapped Ark, he defends himself with his magic, and in the process, the head that entrapped him is destroyed. Using his judgment skill, Ark destroys three of the Hydra heads only for them to regenerate. Teleporting to a safe distance, Ark prepares to use a magic spell he's never used before and summons Ifrit to face off against the Hydra. Elsewhere, Ponta leads Aryan and Shioma to Fumba's location, and he was amused by Aryan's presence, figuring she was there to become his. Fumba tries to possess Aryan with his monsters, but she kills them before he can. Shiome also scars his back, revealing he had a special spell crest seal on his back that helped him control his monsters. Fumba warns them that the Hydra is now out of his control and will kill everyone in the city. Aryan then assures Chioma that everything will be alright because Ark is down there to fight against the Hydra and then proceeds to incinerate Fumba with her flame sword. Back to Ark's side, through the combined efforts of Ark and his summon, Ifrit, they destroy the Hydra. Once Ark regroups with Aryan, Chioma, and Panta, a whisper bird sent by Danka arrives and conveys that Princess Yuriarna has met with one of the great elven elders Fangas. The meeting between them was to settle the matters between their respective kingdoms. Princes Sekt and Dakaras are mentioned as conspirators with the Revlon Empire as well. Princess Yuriarna promises that if the Revlon Empire invaded the elven lands, the Olive Kingdom would help defend them. Fangas agrees to these terms and shakes Yuriarna's hand on it. Returning to Ark's group, they walk down a dirt path, Ark and the group talk about the coexistence between humans and elves. In the kingdom of Olav, Sectrian reports to Prince Sex that Princess Yuriana survived, and her negotiations with the elves were a success. Considering the possibility of a double agent, Prince Sex brushes this off and claims an alternate path to achieve their goal will be taken. In her room, Yuriana believes that she died once before but was brought back to life to fulfill her angel's wishes. News of the deaths of the Hydra and Fumba reach Domitianus who considers it no loss whatsoever and is curious to know who slew the Hydra. Meanwhile, Ark unintentionally reveals his face to Chioma and is then filled in on Ark's condition. It's decided that after they reach Lalatoya, Arian will guide Ark to Lord Crown. Excited about that trip, Ark also asks to see Chiyome's hometown and she sheepishly agrees. 